All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, we have Holly Sobin um, from Mobile, and we all have other branches as well. Right. Okay. So um, they're here to, I think this is like the third time you've been here, and tell us about the company that uh, he is in charge, he's the president, and also um, I'm happy to report we taught him. So we're going to take that little credit from him. Um, very good A student. Uh, in 2003, I think you graduated. Right? Six. Six. I came to 2003. Yeah, and I yeah. So um, he is here to tell you all about his company. And also, um, he is in the process of establishing his college fund for students like yourselves um, who are looking for um, uh, some sort of financial support. And uh, he knows the difficulty of it. He went through a lot of uh, financial challenges while he was here. And he this is how his way and his family's way of, you know, giving back to the program and, you know, where he came from. This is like his second book. Um, we have juniors and some seniors here. So uh, they will want to know what type of work you do in terms of the business operation. And also share like to them of how you move up the ladder. Sure. All right. Absolutely. Thank you all for coming and um, thank you. I see food is already available. Um, thank you very much. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Dr. Henry. Uh, hey everyone, I know there's a lot of new faces. My name is Brett O'Rell. I'm with Poly Surveying. Uh, we live at home base of that mobile. Um, and uh, we are a family owned and operated company. We've been around for 52 years. Uh, I'm third generation surveyor, came to school here at Troy, graduated in 06, uh, and then from there went back to Mobile, started my career. Um, we, we are a very uh, vast and growing company. Primarily, the work that we do is in the private sector. Um, we don't really do a lot of uh, engineering design type work, anything like that. We don't have the engineering leg of our business, so we're solely focused on surveying what that means. Um, we have a team of around 45 uh, team members currently. Some of those range uh, as far east as, um, say, Walton County, Florida, with a new new personnel being relocated to around Ocala, the Gainesville area, just north of uh, Orlando. And now we are uh, starting to work in this region, servicing Birmingham, Montgomery, Opelika, Troy, uh, with some of our clients. So. Um, we do a lot of work. Our, our big specialty is in the home building sector. Um, those of y'all, if you pay attention enough, and you may have friends that have gone on, bought their first home, the, the home building sector has been pretty crazy for the last few years. Uh, it's calming down a little bit now with interest rates going up. Uh, those are things that you probably are on your radar, but I'm sure you hear people talking about those things. But uh, our region, I think the Gulf Coast region in general, is in a great place for expansion and growth for the next 20, 30 years. So y'all set up in a great location. I assume the majority of you are, are from this region and grew up in this region, probably plan to stay and work in this area. So, um, you know, for us, we do we do all, all types of work from construction layout, you know, to everything through the home building process. You know, big boundary work could be 120 acre jobs to, to one acre jobs. We do uh, plenty of topos and support of other engineering industries, but we, that's not really our specialty. We do that uh, for certain specific clients that we work for. Um, something I go out and, and actually pursue. Um, we we also do uh, you know any type of work uh, that we do in that sector is is and supported by our drone division. Which we have a lot of our drone, and we have uh, it's roughly like five pilots. So we do a program within our company, an incentive program. So you join in, whether you just started with me and you came in to be one of my researchers or a admin to field personnel to draft to traffic personnel. I challenge everyone with becoming licensed and getting their drone license. They give them a twenty five hundred dollar bonus associated with that. Uh, once they accomplish that, we try to uh, push them in that direction, and then from there, uh, get them into utilizing software that can be used in surveying techniques, 
we currently use uh, a program called PIX 4D. That's who, what we stay with and it works well for us. So um, that's another $2,500 bonus. So about $5,000 bonus available to anyone and everyone doesn't matter, right? Um, so we do a lot of things that way. Um, you know, our, our team itself has really expanded its reach. I think last time I was here, you know, I focused on, you know, we have a lot of personnel that work in all these different regions. I call them field divisions, but they basically work with like COVID talk, so a different way to do work where brick and mortars weren't necessarily the uh, end all be all. You know, there's a lot of uh, costs associated with business, and that's what you'll hear me talk primarily about. That's what I like this business. I really want to push for questions in regards to that. Um, but it allowed us to look at a different avenue. Um, we've had people relocate into new pockets and sectors and be able to pursue relationships with uh, home building clients that go into new regions that allow us to have growth and we can run and operate everything out of our corporate office in Mobile. The majority of our team is there. I'd say 40, 41 of those personnel are there and actually oversee the day to day production. The, the build personnel are, are out and we able to use technology to benefit us there. So, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, our company is really set up for, for growth. My goal for it is to be a regional company. We're, we're on that on that track to do so. Like I said, we service from Long Beach, Mississippi, currently uh, into Hattiesburg, with eyes on Jackson, Mississippi, so the central part of Mississippi. And we're looking to cover the entire state of Alabama, eventually Tennessee. Uh, I'm sitting for my Georgia test tomorrow. Um, and uh, we're now working in Alabama as far north as, as Birmingham for the home building sector. But covered a lot of this all the way south of Tampa. So we're trying to grow regionally and we need help. I mean, I have two partners who are aging. They're both my father and uncle, so I grew up in the business. Uh, they're getting close to retirement. I have my brother who is taking a different route. Um, he is set to sit for his license retest, uh, I believe next year, and he hopefully will become licensed. And I have several others, like some that are actually enjoying the program here from the GIS level that are doing more online, and some that are south and going a different, a longer route than, than most of you here. So we're here uh, seeking help, future PLS. I'll, I'll tell you this, you know, the education doesn't end here. You know, this is one part of it. It's kind of sad to see Dr. Ramru could, could tell you more. There are several people that I graduated with, or maybe even after me, that, that got a degree here. For whatever reason, they maybe didn't get through their first licensure test, and they just gave up. I'm here to encourage you to take this. Keep pushing. It's very important. This Just having this degree is one thing. Having a PLS behind you is, is another thing. It sets yourself up for success. In so many different ways you may not even see currently, but I, I encourage you not to stop here to push forward and make sure just just stay at it. You'll get through it. it. It's not easy, but nothing in life is. So just keep pushing. Um, so you know, I, I really don't have a, a set agenda in terms of of you know. I think last time I got pretty long winded and, and went the full hour, but um, you know. I really do want to talk to you, you all about business and what your expectations are. You know, coming out of school, I'll be honest with you. It, I, I was here six years. I, I had a lot of fun and, and, and played a lot. So, uh, you know, coming out of school, young young man, not real focused. Um, probably didn't really hit that till 20, 28, to be honest with you. Um, but since then, kind of working through that process to get to where I am in my career, about 40. Um, you know, it's it, it takes some time and, and, and you'll have that time to to build your career, and build the avenue you want to go. There, there's a many of places you can go and work for engineering companies. That's I've been there, done that. Not something I'm not telling anyone not to do that. Just something I don't necessarily enjoy. Um, there's so many opportunities out for you all. Um, so I, I just think that that if you if you have dreams of, of having your own business or working within a business that gives you an opportunity for growth. Um, I think I think we actually fit that mold. Um, you know, my goal is while we are a family owned and operated company, 
my goal is always to promote from within and give everyone that opportunity to eventually, if you if you want to work up and be, and you know get my job, you know we'll train you up and you, you can take that. Or you can open up a new branch or whatever it may be. Um, starting a business is not easy. Keeping a business operating is not easy. You got a lot of pressure on you. You know I got 45 people that count on me. Um, that's something a, a burden I'm willing to take on, but um, it's not for everyone. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if, if a lot of you that are getting close to finishing up, you know, what interest you have in the field. Um, a lot of the, you are new to the program, a lot of new faces from last time. You know, what your expectations are, you know, is it to make a lot of money? Is it have stability? Is it to work outside? Is it to um, freelance and, and have the freedom to work out of your garage? There's many of people that have a lot of success that work for themselves. I mean, let's just be real. They may have a small team. The majority majority of surveyors I know in the private sector that I primarily work in maybe have three to five members on their team. So it's a little different what, what, what I'm doing and, and trying to accomplish, but it cannot be done without great people and great team members. And that's my big focus. You know, so, um, you know, that's kind of who I am, who we are. And uh, I gladly, you know, take any questions in regards to, you know, being business forward and, and any questions you may have on what that looks like. How do you get there? You know, that's that's primarily what I enjoy. So uh, building relationships. You know, if anybody had any any kind of questions in particular. Um, how many field crews do you all have? 14. So primarily. We run one man operations or, or lady off. We have a lot of females. I have a lady outside with me currently. Um, segueing into that, uh, I was just talking to Denise. I think there's four ladies in the program now. Is that, is that correct? Yes. yes. So what I've seen, y'all were there. There weren't any. No one was here last time. But I'll touch on a trend that I've seen in our industry and in construction in general. I'd say my team is made up of 35 uh, percent ladies. Um, that could be from the admin side. That could be from uh, computer drafting side. I have a lot of uh, draft drafting personnel and field side. I haven't seen or, or had an opportunity to bring someone and mentor in from the PLS side, but I think that I think that's going to be a growing trend in the future. I think y'all are in a, in a great spot for an opportunity for just huge success. Um, so I'd encourage you to stick with it and, and really follow through and, and and stay with the program. Um, so we, we primarily work with uh, Trimble equipment, so we use all robotics. So that's the last two one man operations. And then we have R12s, which is the highest end GPS units you can have. Typically we run a. Um, we run either base Rover or we'll just run off of uh, the network, the public network. So it kind of just depends on the areas. Florida has a great network. Mississippi, Alabama, yeah, it's okay in, in spots. Uh, it's getting there, but it's just not there now. So we have probably two of those, we, we call them two man crews, just kind of the terminology we always use. Uh, we run two to three of those for bigger boundary where you need extra set of hands, or that other person that is being trained up has the ability to learn and do certain things. We do a lot of Commercial surveying or something called an ALTA survey or ALTA survey is what I call it for short. That's going to be your big title lending survey. It could be big retail centers, apartment complexes, mobile home parks, you know, that sort of thing. It's going to have a high dollar transaction. I just finished the, the hardest job in my career uh, recently. It was in North Alabama, North Mississippi. It's for an industrial oil refinery. Uh, it's a half a billion dollar sale. Of about 15 different uh, projects. Um, it was by far the most challenging uh, job we've ever taken on. Not from the survey side, but when you do that type of work, you have a, a, a lot of easements and things in the chain of title that go over the history of time that have to be sorted out by attorneys and all these. So you're, you're constantly back and forth with attorneys and, and getting that worked out. So we finally finished that project, thankfully. Uh, and so, um, to answer your question, that's yeah, sorry, that will say to say way into some other things. But Fourteen crews currently. Uh, we have we have two other personnel in training, 
and one that's being relocated, like I said, to somewhere in and around Orlando uh, as well. Very soon. Of the uh, 14 crews, do they have like, do they have to show up to the office every day or do they stay like at their house and just keep the equipment with them? And right. So, so the ones in that, that really service a, a smaller region, I'd say, being in Mobile, we service, say, Baldwin County, say, out, anything that has like an hour commute, right? Right now, Baldwin County, uh, Mississippi, um, the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Most of those do report to the office. However, I have one, one, two team members I've relocated, one to Pensacola. So he works completely remote. Um, I have two in the Phoenix Springs, one that I added from Colorado, one that was in Mobile, he relocated there. So they basically, you know, work from home. Uh, the other one's moving to Orlando, same thing, remote work. And then I just recently hired uh, someone to service the Mississippi Gold Coast. For me, the way I see it is logistics of window time, we lose in production, fuel. Y'all seen fuel go through the roof, right? you fill up the gas tanks. Uh, it's come down some of the fuel, industry, every kind of cost you can imagine. If we can put someone out and working more hours of the day, of course, their production is going to go up. We can pay them a lot more. Our bottom line improves, our whole team improves, and we can outpace from a, from a pay standpoint uh, really anyone in our industry. That, that's kind of the, the key goal for me. If I keep corporate in, in South Alabama and I go do work in South Florida at a different rate, it's much easier to control that, that, um, that production and really just put that money back in our team. We do a lot of different things within um, something I try to do to keep people motivated is do quarterly bonuses. I've done that for six years now, and we've actually gone to a monthly bonus, and it's it's simply team based. So we produce about anywhere from what 1,200 to 15, 1,600 jobs or surveys per month, and I put a number in there, and that typically has resulted in the outside of the owner to say the other 42 team members. About 150 to 200 dollars a month, they get an additional bonus on. So it's team focused. If you walked in the street, you know, uh, right out of high school, and you come to work for me, it's no different than the person who's been with me 35 years. You know, you're going to get the same same bonus there. So we try to just treat treat our our people well. Uh, we try to promote. You hear me say team a lot because that's very important uh, as you grow a business. You, you know. If you, if you want to get and scale, you can't do it without trusting people and uh, you know, having their back. And so that's that's kind of been my end up. And uh, how many license answers? We have three currently. So myself, I'm licensed in Alabama, Florida, and Mississippi, pursuing Georgia. My father was licensed in Mississippi and Alabama, and then my uncle was licensed only in Alabama. My brother is pursuing Alabama, should be close. It's only three out of at 45, but we, we pump out a lot of work and uh, just are capable of, the, of just improving our process and the procedures and make things happen. So technology is really helpful and really just uh, having a great team. I mean, that's the key of all. Y'all have like a plan if you were to graduate and go there, like to study for that study for the BS. Absolutely. You know, I, I think I think for me it, it would be new, a new thing, but obviously gaining some level of build build presence or. or, or Skills in the field is important. Is it the end all be all? I would say not. I mean, some people may, that may be all you want to do, right? It's just, I just want to be in the field, I want to work, and all those things. For me, I did it all my life. I started this in thir when I was 13 years old. And so I grew up in the business, um, probably had tons of experience coming out. So when I came out, you know, it's probably, I probably have to feel four months, I just didn't really need that much, and then focused on researching, you know, communicating with people. Kind of more managerial approach. So I'd say, you know, for us, we would want to bring anyone in and really garner that to what is your skill set? What is it you want to pursue to become a PLS? What does that look like? What's that framework look like? Because um, it's uh, in business, in anything, you have to be willing to pivot and, um, you know, find what those, those skills are and use them to the best of your ability. Can you say something about the co-op opportunities that you offer? Yeah, and I have been since our last uh, meeting. 
Uh, I know that was a hot topic. It was at the end of the spring, and I understand that's a requirement of education, right? Two, is it two summers or six yeah. weeks or something? Yeah. Like they can do one, but if they do one, then uh, they want to graduate at the end of the following in spring, they will have to do a senior project. We encourage them to do two. Do two. Okay. Um, a lot of them here will be looking at um, co-op opportunities for next time. Okay. So, yeah, on that, I don't know if it is it is it what qualifies. I mean, obviously for me, I want someone that wanted to work an entire summer. Is it like six weeks? No, an entire summer. It's not just a now, is it? from after from end of May when the uh, spring semester finishes to the end of the um, summer. OK, yeah, so so the one one challenge that, that I have been seeing is that I understand it from being a student here, right? It's like, you know, being here, I have a commitment to a lease. I have the commitment to uh, so housing. Housing has been a challenge. I've been trying to solve. That particular thing, so if you're not from Mobile, you know, how, how are you going to live and, and work and all that? So uh, I'm still in the process of trying to figure that out um, uh, in terms of, of how to provide adequate housing or help assist with adequate housing so that you can continue to pay for your rent here while you're out in the summer. I'm sure your lease is run through the summer unless you're staying on campus. So I dealt with that and I, I do understand that. So I, I think it would be, uh, that's probably the biggest obstacle for me is, is just figuring that out, but I'm a problem solver and it's an easy thing to do. It's just finding, you know, a way to um, really don't, don't want anyone having a, a summer live in a hotel. So it's like, you know, how do we, how do we solve that on a short term lease? Um, Cause housing is not, easy to find in Mobile and it may not be easy here. It's, it's kind of a challenge. So I, I think it would be uh, that's easily overcome. There's always a way to, to solve that, but it would be we would love to have uh, several. I mean, I would I would love to have three to four um, um, of you to come down, be a part of what we have, see what our culture is like, see the work that we do, really get some real true field experience with what I believe is the, the best equipment out there for field surveying um, and then working with our team. You know, we have a lot of our team that's been in this industry. I have some 35 years, some 15, 20 years experience, some two, some you know, shorter experience. Some of those two year personnel that are out running their own crew, um, they understand and get it. Uh, we've been able to attract uh, very uh, intelligent people who really just are salt of the earth, want to work and, and learn and push on. So. Um, we would encourage anyone to come join our team and, you know, if there's specific questions that come up, you know, if that's something that interests you, I'm always available to discuss in terms of pay and all those things, what that looks like throughout. But in terms of the housing, I think that's a big one. That's something that, that I'm willing to, to take ownership of and, and provide in some manner to um, where you don't have to offset whatever you're paying here. And once you decide about that, um, you know, what sort of assistance you can give them, send me the information so I can relate to them. Sure. So, sure. Fine. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I know what it was like to, and I don't know how, do other, do other um, companies go ahead and put out a platform of like expected pay and things of that nature? Uh, some of them, the, the leave that for the informal section, it was one time. Right. You talk in, but yeah. Right. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I would think too. Um, but but I would I would encourage anyone who who has aspirations to kind of get a wide variety of survey knowledge from from boundary to topo to construction layout to um, I'm sure I'm missing quite a bit. We do a ton of you know foundation surveys, anything elevation certificates. We do a lot on the coast. That's a big thing on, on the coast is is elevation. That's a different uh, animal of itself setting benchmarks, doing those type of things that are, that are done throughout the Gulf Coast region. Um, and then hopefully the plan is, so I'm, I'm in the process of hiring another remote guy. He's got about 20 years experience out of Montgomery to service my new clientele up in this area. So we're meeting tomorrow. We've been talking for four or five months. And the intent then would be hopefully when he came onto the team, that's pretty close in proximity to any student here that in the summer or even throughout you know school get you trained up to where even you know maybe while you're here in school you could be working for me doing layout for the you know, Orton or any of these these other uh, entities that bring on the fun board so there may be several opportunities to continue beyond just 
a summer job. Dave, what do you do with the drone? Does he have particular drones? Yeah, so so a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the the LiDAR drone is a, you know, particular, um, we, we've invested quite a bit uh, of money in it. Uh, we, we looked to reinvest the money recently, but we've held back a little bit. Uh, it's primarily used for new site design, so we'll do topo instead of the old days of going in and chopping bushes and killing our people. You know, we'll come in, we'll do the boundary, we'll set control, we'll pick up drainage infrastructure, utilities in and along the road, you know, tie in points to existing roads. Our bread and butter is primarily for new subdivision design, but we also do I have a contract and I do pretty much every dollar general south of Montgomery, I handle in Alabama. And so if you, if you drive anywhere, you see dollar generals everywhere. So we, we do probably two of those a month. So that's one use of the LIDAR drone we use. And those are normally could range from just two acre sites to, to five to 10 acres, depending on what their plan development is beyond that. Um, and then like I said, subdivision design is another big component. And big big commercial work. We're seeing a big growth um, like Audi. I don't know if y'all have or anybody familiar with Audi. There's a big movement of Audi coming into the region. So there's a huge distribution center to win in Loxley off um, just off I-10. Uh, in Baldwin County, a lot of distribution centers going in in that region. We we recently did a, a 250-acre topo. That would have taken our field personnel, uh, while some of it was fields, a lot of it was woods, it would have taken us probably, you know, eight to ten weeks to complete and probably two to three crews, and we were able to cut that time down to four weeks and really only have to utilize field crews in certain areas, right? So, uh, it's a big advantage to have our field personnel not wearing them down to the bones in the summer heat, you know, not chopping bushes and doing all these things and going to do other productive things and, and, and really make our company more money, thus giving them, you know, more opportunity as well. So that's that's one one thing on the lot of drone. The photo drone we primarily use in, in regards to that as well. Uh, when y'all get out and start working, you'll learn that the DOT in every locale has certain specific requirements of when you're delivering <laughs> off their road for access management. So you normally have a project, say you have a, a 10 acre project, you have to go beyond the property lines, both sides of the road, of an Al dot road or F, F dot road, whatever it may be, 250 feet picking up for, it could be longer if they need to put in a turn lane. Well, safety is a big concern of mine. That has helped cut down on putting personnel in what would be a five, six, ten lane highway, we can eliminate that and just focus on the drainage infrastructure that's there, the utilities. That's a big component we use uh, by blending those two products together. And then the big commercial sites that we mentioned, uh, the Alta surveys, big uh, apartment complexes, things of that nature. So it's a huge time savings. Um, it's basically surveying in the office. I mean, it's really what it comes down to, but the accuracy is, is very high. Uh, it's it's, it's extremely high. You remove really a lot of human error out of those things. So that's how we, we primarily use it. I know there's a lot of other uses, um, industrial use, but we're not, we don't really focus on that. Have you ever used the USGS LiDAR data on people the The LiDAR data? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have. We, we, uh, it's pretty accurate. Uh, I mean, uh, our team, we use it a lot of times for kind of preliminary site development, you know, meeting with a client, you know, hey, I want to put in uh, an RV park. Well, RVs really don't need to be built on, you know, big hills, or if they are, it's going to you know, rise up, you know, raise the cost of construction. But we use it a lot of times. Uh, certain jurisdictions require it, like for sub little minor subdivisions, they want to see how the drainage is to see if there might be a need for, say, an uh, imposed drainage easement. May not have any drainage infrastructure in it now, but it might need it as development happens. So we, we use it quite a bit for a number of, it's a great tool, you know, uh, that's out there into the public, you know. Have you had any um, litigation for uh, not meeting your specs conventional scenario? Yeah. Uh, they, they happen. Uh, I've been fortunate 
recently not to have have any. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, mistakes do happen. Um, most of the time, they can be solved financially. Uh, most recent, I have, have had to, you know, you do a lot of construction layout. We probably laid laid out fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred homes this year, year to date. And uh, you know, you you oftentimes have mistakes. You get over a front setback. Uh, field personnel that catch it, captain personnel that catch it. Uh, if it's not presented properly, maybe the surveyor doesn't catch it until there's you know, something that comes up. We had one recently, but the plum, rough plumbing was in. Uh, we ended up having, to, you know, I had to make the call and say, look, you know, we're human, make a mistake, send me a bill, we'll back it up. So that's, you know, $7,500 mistake. They, they happen. Um, uh, other things that, that happen, <laughs> You know, encroachments. Uh, we recently did a subdivision. We did it 07. It sat idle for up until 2020. It was repurchased by a developer. And, and that developer decided instead of big state lots, you know, acre size lots, to go down to 60, 80 foot lots. Um, we did a resurvey of our original plat, and it was missed that at the corner of one of the lots that we newly created that an access for a property adjacent say 20 acres he had a 15 foot strip so his the, the county decided to put in a driveway because of the culvert over here just out of convenience well it clips that property so so now i'm in the process of probably going to be sued by my client not by the adjoiner um because they've been named in a lawsuit and primarily that stemmed from drainage issues that was created by the home builder. Uh, it just happens now that because this access issue is there, I'll probably be looped into the suit and, and you know, have to deal with it. But you know, we have insurance. That's what one requirement most most uh, most people you have. And it, but you try to avoid those at all costs. You know, I mean, while you may have a twenty thousand dollar deductible, um, if you get hit with a pretty large suit, that's going to reciprocate over a long period of time. Yeah. Yeah, raise your cost. So if you can handle it out of pocket, sometimes it's better to admit your mistakes and, and move on. So but they do happen, no one's above it. Not, not anyone that's ever worked in this industry is above it. So what's all involved with y'all's house lab? So y'all just do foundations and offsets or sure so in utilities so we don't we don't really do utilities a lot of times uh, i'll give you an example of a jurisdiction that's probably the most restrictive i've ever worked in so freeport florida y'all probably go down there visiting the beach go down 331 um they are we have to go in and do a boundary survey initially we have to then locate water and sewer ladders for driveway impaction or replacement uh, they also require tree surveys of, of trees over four inches. And if you've seen a, a pine thicket, you know, because a lot of trees would be in a, a, you know, a small piece of property. So we have to do that first and we'll do a plot plan or a site plan to show that placement. Uh, a lot of times our clients will say, hey, we'll write front entry. We'll see the sewer lateral may impact that. We'll flip it, make sure they're aware of that. Then we'll come out and do a construction layout to follow. So laying out just the four corners of the house. Um, Freeport then requires even further, uh, a, they have a 12 inch crown rule. So, uh, crown the road, we have to have the foundation 12 inches above to pre prevent, you know, future drainage problems. So they make us verify that. So we do a foundation with elevation and then typically we do a final with elevation. Obviously at that point, it's not really going to change elevation wise. Uh, they do require even a final topo that we have to send to the engineer for a drainage letter show that they meet that so they're just trying to relinquish any liability they can as a permitting jurisdiction um and put that on it everyone they can so uh we do a lot of, a lot of that throughout we also do sometimes we'll have opportunities where we do a foundational elevation and say a construction elevation certificate if it's in a flood zone so oftentimes we'll go up to a job we'll do two to three jobs at one time and i'm able to you know deal accordingly you know for that so Pretty, pretty good situation. Florida is very, very, very good. Uh, it continues to kind of push west and eventually push up this direction. Um, and are seeing it in Pensacola and San Rosa County. They're starting to become 
a uh, little more strict on things they're sitting and that, that moves into Alabama and other places. I think just um, related to what you said about all of these centers, I, I drove down to Milton uh, in Alberta and I saw a big part of uh, all these sort of fence and a and um, obviously that what it did or? Uh, I didn't do that particular project, but I know that um, you know, a lot of these I have to do like NDAs on uh, non-disclosure agreements for um, certain clients until they get to a certain, I did years ago, uh, I've done work for Amazon and, and we've done big uh, FedEx projects that, you know, until it gets out to the media, you have to kind of keep hush hush. And I've, I've got a client, uh, I didn't do that one, but we're doing a lot of, uh, got hooked up with an engineer out of, um, he's out of Oklahoma and we're doing a lot of uh, swift trucking. You've probably seen those, those on the road, we're doing a ton of, they're expanding their transportation fleet quite a bit. And so we're actually working. I'm actually teaming up with one of my former co or I guess he's a good buddy of mine, he's at Hargrove, Adam Driggers. Um, so he's licensed in Georgia. We're teaming up on a project to where he's handling the, the boundary Alta survey. I'm handling the topo. So we this is our second project together. And I was I'm sitting for my Georgia license, so I'll soon remove that. But because I had the relationship with the trucking, with the engineering company who has the relationship with the trucking company, didn't want to turn that opportunity down for future opportunities down the road. So, um, you know, you can, you know, your colleagues here, you know, you'll make relationships for life. And, and um, Adam and I are probably the closest of, of, of others, but I have several others in the region that I keep up with. Hunter Smith does a, does a lot of private work like I do. He enjoys more, uh, he's in Baldwin County. He does more uh, work and support of engineers. That's kind of his niche and what he enjoys. We all do different things. Uh, Adam does, you know, industrial work for Chevron and, and, and 3D scanning. You know, that's his, his thing. So there's there's many avenues you can pursue. Um, I think the biggest thing that's, that's unique for what we do is you're, you're normally, our field personnel are somewhere new every day. They're, they're doing something different. Um, you know, having new challenges and, and learning and, and solving problems. But that's 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 what we're here to do. That's what surveyors do: solve problems, solve boundary disputes, try to keep people out of courts. Is the best thing we can do. Well, I mean, if no one has anything else, I guess I you know I don't keep y'all too long. I appreciate y'all having me. You know, if you have any interest in in getting you know. Having a phone call, uh, email, whatever, just just hit me up, talk to me after or in weeks to come, and it's something you may be interested in. Um, you know, we, we need we need great people. Um, we we are looking to grow regionally, um, and so you know, really the Southeast United States is, is our planned footprint, and um, can't do it without you know any of you in this room. And you you know, y'all are the future and. Uh, I acknowledge that and, and know that, that a good team is built with great people. And so uh, if you ever want to consider joining the team, give me a call. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to be in scholarship. Uh, that's a, a big thing. Uh, to have an opportunity to do uh, that. Guess, uh, I was kind of surprised when, when I came up in the hearing and Dr. Bramberg said, well, there weren't a lot of scholarship opportunities for the students. And so I'm excited to hear what you I've been mentioning to, to, to a lot of the research that they need. Hey guys, take whatever case time, but take a look back. Wait, you remember what y'all want? 2006. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Was it open? Okay. No, it was open. Okay. Before you even yeah. yeah. you know what? I can't. I knew it was close to that time. Uh, yeah. Really? I did. Yeah. 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 Yeah.